Hello. Hi, everyone. So today's talk, we are going to talk about Microsoft Dynamics Finance and Operations with Power Platform. My name is Vassal Farid, and I would highly encourage to use uh, the Scottish Summit, Summit 2020, 2021 as a hashtag on LinkedIn and Twitter. Today, we are going to talk about <clears throat> Microsoft Dynamics Finance and Operations with Power Platform, how we can integrate this one. But before we get into the actual talk today, I, I would really like to thank to sponsors, Script Runner, a global driving uh, data quality, Proximo, uh, Red Spy, Eglises, and Hitachi Solutions. So thank you so much for all the sponsors for Scotty Summit today. A little bit about myself today. Uh, my name is Faisal Farid. I am a Microsoft Dynamics Technical Architect working as a DXP technology uh, in Melbourne, Australia. I'm a technology enthusiast. Uh, I have been learning Power Platform, and I'm an active blogger, speaker, and community power, power community ambassador. I am also Microsoft Dynamics Community Spotlight being awarded early this year. Uh, if you want to follow me on my Twitter account, my LinkedIn, my blog, and my YouTube channels, URLs are being provided here. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I, I have been actively working in ANZ region, <clears throat> which is Australia and New Zealand region, for Dynamics 65 Finance and Operations. And uh, uh, for... Uh, for, and finance and operations too. Uh, I'm also working as a Microsoft Dynamics tech, uh, and Power Platform Community Leader for Pakistan. If you for, if you want to follow me on, you can follow me on uh, my LinkedIn account using this barcode there. <clears throat> Uh, agenda is very straightforward. We are going to talk about the integration capabilities within Microsoft of Dynamics Finance and Options. It's a very broad topic. There are so many where we can integrate finance and operations with the rest of the apps within the Microsoft Dynamics ecosystem. But here in this talk, in next 40, 35 minutes, we are going to talk about how we can get finance and operations with the Power Platform. I'll show a little bit demo to you. And then we, we will talk about the data where integration options. And last, we will touch base integration capabilities at a glance. So I will provide you a summary. What can be used? What are the features available out of the box for finance and operations with Power Platform? So stay tuned with me throughout the whole session. Before we get into the actual talk today, I will be using different acronyms here. So for Microsoft Dynamics Finance and Operations, I'll be using FNO, FinOps. For Dataverse, I will be using Common Data Services, CDS somehow. Uh, for, for Dynamics 55, for Sales, I'll be using Customer Engagement, CE, Sales, CRM. So these are all different names which I, I have highlighted on my this slide. For Data Indicator, I'll, I may be using DI, Dual Right, TW, Bring Your Own Data, Bring Your uh, Azure Data. So uh, these will be these words will be used uh, in, in replacement of others. So what we, what we are doing here fin from fi finance and operations side, we are actually broadcasting the data to the different apps here. Finance and operations being the ERP of, from Microsoft site, it, has, it is the backbone of, of any organization where you can think of you will have the data for the supply chain management you have the data for the production system uh, production module uh, you will have data for the, your inventory uh, your retail uh, your e-commerce you will have data everything from the finance and operations once you get data out of finance and operations you have more options to broadcast this, da this data. You can use Power Platform, you can use Logic Apps, you can use Power BI, you can use SQL, Azure SQL, so and so forth. There are so many options available. What we are going to touch base today is all about uh, this particular option here, which is a Power Platform. So 
regardless there are so many other options available we are not going to touch base on these ones but we are going to touch only one point here and not completely there are so many in-depth to topics to touch to about how we can integrate data between finance and operations with power platform so with this one then these are the integration patterns we got from finance and operations and data was and which I have highlighted as a power platform here. The, the reason I have used this data works here because finance and operations holds data into SQL. If we have the cloud hosted environments, which is your development machines, that will be the pure SQL, data, SQL data server. Whereas if you have your data, if you have your environment hosted on Microsoft Cloud, then Microsoft subscription, then it will be the Azure SQL. But regardless, it's a cloud-based or a but or other Microsoft hosted one, it is the SQL database. Whereas if we go back to the Power Platform, where we have a Dataverse, the so Dataverse is the under layer where all the data got got stored. Data coming from the customer engagements, sales, fees field services, project operations, everything is, is going data into your dataverse. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now, what we got here, different integration option patterns here, what first is the dual right. Then we will, <coughs> we got virtual entities, and then we have the, the data integrators here. Apologies for my cough. Uh, it's, it's pretty cold over here and I'm also not feeling well so that's why I'm just coughing during my talk so apologies in advance for that one <coughs> so let's let's talk about the data integrator first and what are the attributes we got over here for the attributes if we talk about the speed the dual right is actually the near real time and the Virtual entities are the it, it, they provides all the CRUD operations to you. Data integrator is not the real near real time. It has to be scheduled and the, all the bad it has to be a bad job. So if you if you run the process today, you have to run maybe for after a 30 minutes or you want to run a process, it will run overnight. So it has to be a scheduled process. So data integrator is used for those processes which does not, which do not require uh, a near real time integration, where you you have a data which can wait and it will run on a certain point, certain time. Then what the method it use is asynchronous pattern. So asynchronous pattern is actually explains you have to wait. You send the request. You, you are not expecting a response at the same time. You send the request asynchronous and then you will wait the process to complete. Once it's complete, it will send back you a request there. It's all it's always a one one directional there. Uh, means you are sending data from finance and operations to Dataverse. I will keep referring Dataverse here, which is we, we, we could say Power Platform. Uh, we are sending data from finance operations to power platform or vice versa data is duplicated here whatever the data you have in finance and operations for example customer a customer exists in finance and operation the same customer does exist maybe as an account maybe as an a, a contact in your power platform within your data verse and on top of Dataverse, you can use any of the apps, which which uh, these are the apps come with the customer engagements. It could be field services, it could be your sales and marketing, it could be any project operations too. <coughs> Next point is the business logic is outside of data integrator. Whatever the business logic you have, you have to write down most likely this business logic will be written in in finance and operations under data entities data integrator is very powerful when you have a, a big volume of data huge volume of data 
you have hundreds of thousands of records, then data integrator is your choice. You have you should be going with the data integrators. Then that was the first option which Microsoft introduced a couple of few years ago, <clears throat> uh, where we got the data integrator. Then uh, last year in March, Microsoft got uh, generally available dual write. It's a near real time comparison to data indicator. You do not have to wait. It's you created a customer in finance and operations. It, it will create an account in customer engagement. It's a it's a synchronous pattern means you do not need to wait there. It's a bi-directional which actually explains with its own name dual right. It actually creates data in both directions. So it depends on to your configuration, your setups, how you have set up the dual right. It can be a one directional, but the, the, the process is it, it is a bi-directional, but it's your choice. If you want to sync data one directional, dual right can definitely be set up for one direction too. Again, data is duplicated. Whatever the data you have in finance and operations, it will be duplicated in customer engagements too. And so for the logic is actually, it's, it's a single transaction based. So it does not work really, really well for the uh, huge volume of data because it is not designed for that purpose. So one of the uh, trick or tip which I want to highlight here, dual right is not your data migration tool. So do not use it for the, any data migration tool. Means if you have your more than 10,000 customers imported into your finance and operations, and you are keeping the dual right enabled, then it will take a lot of time and sometimes it will be a timeout issue in syncing your 10, 000, more than 10,000 customers from your finance and operations to your uh, customer engagement. So this is not a data migration tool. You have to, if you want to do this, go with the data integrator. <clears throat> Last option we got here is a virtual entity. Virtual entities initially got introduced in back in 2017, but now Microsoft has evolved this virtual entities and, and make it uh, and allow it to for uh, have all the CRUD operations. You can perform all the CRUD operations. It does not define any methods here, any directions here, because the data does not get re replicated. Virtual entities is actually the concept of a power platform. I would say it's a concept of a customer engagement itself. You have the data entities here, now, what happens, finance and operation is one of the data source for the customer engagement. It can be a, any, any data source, so which is, very, which is very powerful. You can have multiple data sources from different, different systems, get data into one place, and then you can, uh, uh, you can combine data there, <clears throat> and then Whatever the whatever you want to perform actions within a virtual entities, you can you can create different apps on it, uh, combining different data sources. And what what happens here with this virtual entities, finance and operations become as one of the data source for the virtual entities. So we will we will look uh, it's a little bit detail shortly. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about the data integrators a little bit more in details first. If, as you can see here on the left hand side, we got Dataverse, which is uh, the feed, I, I will say just for the reference purpose, we can say TDS here, but the new name is Dataverse. We have different apps on here, which is a part of Microsoft Dynamics 65, and it has a data database here. The database is actually a dataverse. <clears throat> so all the apps have the same database. And on the right hand side, we got the similar pattern. 
finance and operations app here and within finance and operations we have different modules here we have retail here we have a inventory management we have a supply chain we have a gl here we have a organization hierarchies so so many of modules within finance and operations so for with a data integrator what happens here uh, we we got, we interview we got the data integrator in between finance and operations and then uh, in between finance and operations we got uh, a data integrator so in finance and operations and and customer engagement we got a data integrator it's an admin it's an admin center thing means uh, it has to be uh, it has to be done through an admin say admin uh, admin center for within finance and operations. So meanwhile, I'm just opening uh, my environment here <clears throat> so that I can show you how the data integrator works here. Okay, so unfortunately, my laptop got restarted. So I'm just opening all the sessions again here. It won't take much time, I promise. All right. So while these environments are opening here, what I'll show you, uh, I'll just take you to the next point first. So data versus data indicator overview. I'll just give you the first overview here. What does it mean here? We got the CDS, which is the data, which is the data, uh, data verse here. We got a customer engagement with two apps in it, field services and sales. These are the two apps. On to the right hand side, we have a finance and operations with its own database here. What would happen here with a data integrator? We got connected between two different apps here using the data integrator. So data integrator, as you can see, this is an admin center thing. With it, what does it mean here? <clears throat> if we go, if if I now take back you to the power plat uh, power platform here, and now we are into the admin center here. If this is my power platforms. It's been taking time here as uh, system a little bit slow there, uh, but while it's opening, I'll just see what we can talk further about that one. So what happens here to to configure your data integrator? What you have to do first? So first you have to go to the make.powerapps.com. You have to choose your correct environment there, which I am already here, environment. And this is my environment ID here. And on, on left hand side, you will see the connections here. So all you need to do is create a new connection. Once you, you choose your connection here, just search here, Dynamics 365. So you will see this option here, finance and operation and uh, Dynamics 365. So I have already chosen these two connections here. <clears throat> the, so before my session started, I just connected 45 or 44 minutes ago, these two set connections. So this is the first point you have to create a connection. Then you have to log into your admin center <clears throat> of this particular environment, which I have chosen here. Uh, and over here under, under the data integrator, you have to create a new connection set here. So if we go with the connection set here, I would say, uh, Scottish Summit, and then whatever the connection we have chosen, we have created here, it will automatically start appearing here. So this is my connection, and then it will automatically choose whatever the environment I have. And this is my second part of the connection, and then I got this option here. <clears throat> so these are all manual points which I'm doing right now. And as you can see, this is actually retrieving the organization information from finance and operations and customer engagement environment. These, both the application have a different database structure and also a different way of dealing with the organization hierarchies. 
uh, in finance and operations, we have the legal entities. In customer engagement, we have the business units. So it, it, this is how these two different application map between two different concepts here. So this is uh, once we will have this connection sets available, then we have to create a new project here. Once the project is available, you have to create a template and then define the data integration, the whole what would happen, what fields you will be defining. So all, I will not be going in each and every step here. You can check all the Microsoft Docs and Learns article. It's very well explained and also it is also explained on my blog. So you can follow me on my blogs regarding all this explanation. So this is a quick overview here. You can see all the apps, all the legal entities. It will give you the legal entities here. And also it will give you this, uh, what, what legal entity you want to use. So uh, if we will hit a save here, and then you can create a new project here. And with the new project, you can use either out of the box template or you can use, uh, you can create a new template here. So due to the time limitations, I will quickly jump to the, the next part here. So that this is the admin, admin center, admin center experience here. As you can see, you have to do all the steps yourself. You have to define your connection sets, connections, projects, everything. Whereas if you go back to the data management module of finance and operations, and now we talk about the dual right here. So the dual right actually contains two parts. One is your live sync and one is your uh, schedule process. The schedule process, whenever you do the schedule process, it actually runs the data integrator behind the scene. So the dual right does use the data integrator when you do the schedule thing, which we, which is called the initial thing. Uh, <clears throat> once this screen comes in, so this is how it, it looks like. You, you just need to follow a couple of a few steps, which are very well explained on the Microsoft Talks article, how to set up the dual rights. Uh, but if you, if you, you will have any questions about, if you stuck somewhere, uh, do reach out to me. I'll be try my best to help you out there. Uh, but if we talk about any of the integrations here, uh, let's say if we say <clears throat> all products, and if you want to run this integration, you will see two options here. One is called an uh, initial sync and one is called a uh, live sync. So th there's, uh, if you see that, if you see option here, initial sync, and you should choose this one, you have to, you have to choose a one option at a time. You, whatever you want to keep as a master here. If you want to keep finance and operations as a master, what would happen, whatever the data, from finance and operation will be copied from finance and operations to customer engagement there. And uh, if you do not do this one, you can unmark, you can keep it unmarked and this will be your live sync. But in case you do the initial thing for the very first time after you uploaded all the data into finance and operations and you want to copy finance and operations data from to customer engagement, you want to do the initial thing. If you run this initial thing, it will be considered as your uh, uh, data integrator. So the initial thing is actually the concept of the data integrator with the wrapper of the dual right. So it uses everything behind the scene with the data integrator. It also creates a connection set, project, uh, connections, but what happens with this tour, right? You are not able to see all those connections and the projects. There is a reason to hide all those connections and the projects uh, from you if you do the initial thing, because if you delete anything directly from your power platform admin center, it will create an inconsistency with the dual right within finance and operations. So Microsoft has actually uh, kept its hidden due to these reasons there. <clears throat> so this is uh, this is a quick overview about the dual right here. 
Now, if we go back to the file, uh, customer engagement environment. So if you go to the customer engagement environment and where I have already chosen uh, this as a advanced settings there and within the advanced settings of any environment over here, uh, you can go to your administration module and within administration module, you will see the virtual entities data sources. If you click on it, uh, then you will see a finance and operations as an app here. So if you want to learn more about uh, how you can, uh, what you can do here, you can follow my blog post here. It has a complete set of steps, what you have to do in order to configure your virtual, virtual entities for Power Platform. So if you drill down all the steps, you have to install this particular solution here. You just copy and paste into your Power Platform, uh, your URL here in browser, and it will ask you all the questions, which environment you, ch you want to choose and where you want to install all the dual rights uh, virtual entity solutions. Similarly, you can follow all the steps on for the dual rights here. For the dual rights, you also have to install all the all the prerequisite solutions. So there are a couple, of, there are a few blocks which I have written over the years, and you can follow me on on these blocks. If you're stuck somewhere, as I said, please do reach out to me. So with, with this one, as we as we were seeing here, uh, follow the step from my blog, and then once you reach to this stage, you can click on to your finance and operations here, and then within within this step, you have to define the URL of your finance and operations. So that might, this will be the your your URL here. And then if you go back to here, you can just need to define here. And that and as part of the prerequisites, you must have created an, an Azure Active Directory ID over here and then secret you have defined. Once you have this one, what I have done. So let's let's quickly review uh, what would happen and as part of the virtual entity solutions, uh, what we are going to get over here. So while this is opening over here, now coming back to what are the business scenarios where you can use uh, virtual entities, where you can use data integrator, where you can use the dual right. Dual right, you can use it for your live sync if you want to uh, have data in if you want to keep data into both sides of the fence finance and operations and customer engagement dual right is your choice but if you do not want to replicate the data you want to keep the data into the source you you, you can use the virtual entities but with the virtual entities there are some limitations uh, you cannot create an all data actions with the virtual entities uh, similarly with the data integrator it's, it's a one directional, but if you want to do uh, a copy, you want to copy the data uh, at a certain time of the day, they, you, you, and it's a huge volume of data, go with the data integrator. At the end of the day, all the data with the finance innovations coming within Power Platform, you are writing data into your Dataverse. Once you have the data into Dataverse, you can create Canvas app, model-driven app, you can create portals with, with finance and operations data. As part of this demonstration, what I have done here, I have used one of the data entities to create a, can, uh, a Canvas app. So once you have configured the virtual entities, you will see this available finance and operation entities here. So it will take a little bit time over here. I'll just result on it. And then I'll just show you what Canvas app I have created here. It's a very simple app where I have been. I am using the sales text, which is in which is sitting into finance and operations, our sales text groups, and I'm just putting uh, showing all the data out of finance and operations here. And the 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 powerful thing of this one here is using the virtual entities, you can edit this data directly within finance and operations. So let's say if I want to make it uh, text 10%, I will save it 
and this data will go back to finance and operations and it will it will update it in finance and operations so this get this gets updated into finance and operations uh, now switching back to my my presentation here what we have done here as part of the the whole overview we have installed a ce solutions for the data integrator then we have installed uh, a few templates uh, into data integrator these templates are out of the box from microsoft we talked about the dual right it's a near real time it's a bi-directional you can copy your data master data reference data and business documents here and having dual right what happens you have your finance and operations data natively available into your cds or into your uh, dataverse environment uh, so that that was that that what's happening as a part of the step number two over here then we talked about the virtual entities here so we it's a it's a, another step closer to the finance and operations data into power platform you are getting all the data into your power power platform and then we we had a live demo there then quickly i, I would like to highlight a data warehousing integration options here we call the data as your lake integration here this is the thing which we talked about data integrator tool right here now uh, we want to integrate the finance customer engagement with the first bar app integration and then a customer wants to have this data into his own azure data lake so if with this one it's a cds connector out of the box available and uh this this connect using this connector we can have the customer engagement data into customer's data lake but if the customer wants to have the finance and operations data into the customer's data lake so this is the this is the option what we are getting here finance and operations entity store and it will move from from there to the to the uh data lake itself and what the most powerful thing is it will also take your bring your own database to your data lake and you can integrate with any out any external applications here everything everything is sitting into your lake now you can bring your you can integrate multiple databases with with the lake here you can also store the files you can read the files from this one and you can use the machine learning options uh, on top of uh, your lake here so that is the upcoming feature not yet announced the, from microsoft but these are the this is a picture taken from the microsoft docs article uh, if you want to read more about that one please follow on this particular link from the microsoft docs article uh, i would like to highlight or summarize these options here uh, we got the finance and operations different options for data we have the data management apis for the data warehouse we got the bring your own database entity stores uh, we got we talked about the azure data lake for power platform which is, which we talk about these are different options fno connector is already uh, is going to be expired or obsolete uh, but these three options will be will remain there azure integration we have a different options as we talked about business event uh, logic app azure functions uh, there will be another pattern which we may discuss sometime later. So uh, with this one, I would like to thank you to Scottish Summit. And if you still have any questions, please scan this barcode and you can reach out. You can connect to me and I'm more than happy to answer all the questions. So uh, thank you so much.